Hello everyone, my name is Thorsten and I'm from the program of Evolution and Development. I'm going to tell you about uh, something about one of our projects in human evolution and the story is about a woman from Gotland. Gotland, that is an island in the Baltic Sea. And the woman that I'm talking about, well, she's actually dead. She died around 9,000 years ago and all we have of her is just one single bone. But we took that bone to our ancient DNA lab where we extracted DNA and then sequenced her entire genome uh, to, to quite high quality. And that genome then allowed us to, uh, to look into her as a person and also the population that, uh, that she belonged to. For example, we actually learned that she was a woman because she carried two X chromosomes. We also know that she was lactose, in, lactose intoler intolerant, so she couldn't digest milk. And she probably had a very low diabetes risk. We were also able to reconstruct a bit what she looked like. So for example, we know that she probably had a quite light skin color, blue eyes and brown hair. And by doing this, the same exercise for a couple of other individuals from Scandinavia from approximately the same time frame, we actually know that Scandinavia had been in around 9,000 years ago had quite a range of different hair, eye and skin colors. Maybe it was actually more diverse than Scandinavia is today. And by comparing these individuals from different parts of Scandinavia to each other, we were also able to trace back the migrations into Scandinavia after the last glacial maximum. So what you can see here is that the center of the peninsula is still covered by ice, whereas uh, a bit of the surroundings and the coasts are ice-free. So what we see by comparing them to individu individuals and populations from around Scandinavia is that actually Norwegian individuals here along the coast are Look, look, a bit, look a bit more like the Eastern individuals, whereas the, uh, the Swedish indi indiv individu individuals look more like the Central European individuals. So you're a bit in the paradox situation that the geographic West is kind of the genetic East, whereas the geographic East is the genetic West. How can we explain that? Well, one possibility would just be two independent migrations into Scandinavia after the last ice age. One coming from the south, from Central, Euro Central Europe, going into modern-day Sweden, and one following the ice-free coast along uh, all the way up to uh, all the way from the north down to uh, down um, to what is modern-day Norway. And that pattern is actually quite consistent with a couple of um, archaeological finds of stone tools along the coast, and it's also similar to the migration pattern that we see in a couple of other plants and animals after the last glacial maximum. And with that, I would like to thank everyone involved in this project and you for your attention.